Hey, so ages after the advent of pristine digital recording, there's still considerable fascination with tape recording. So in this video, we're gonna explore the science of tape, figure out why we're still so attracted to the sound of it, and I'm gonna show you how to use it in the context of a modern recording. Let's get to it. Tape recording is an elegant and surprisingly straightforward invention. It's also an intersection between physics and music that I think is worth understanding because it lays bare the principle of how all recording works and something interesting about sound itself. Tape is basically a ribbon, usually made out of polyester, with a magnetic emulsion on it. Now you might be familiar with the emulsion on photographic film, which is sensitive to light. Well, magnetic emulsion, very often something like iron oxide, is sensitive to magnetic fields. Now you might be wondering at this moment what magnetism has to do with anything. Well, it turns out that one of the most interesting discoveries of the 19th century is that magnetism and electricity are two sides of the same coin. Run an electrical current through a wire and you'll produce a magnetic field around it. And the opposite is true. Move a magnet around a wire and this creates an electrical current in the wire. Now, back to tape. Imagine we have a signal running down a wire coming from a mixing board or a microphone. This is the signal we want to record to tape. The wire coils around the rings of the tape head and because it's carrying a signal, creates a magnetic field around it. Run the tape with its magnetic field sensitive emulsion underneath the tape head and this magnetizes the emulsion on the tape. And whatever signal was being passed through that coil of wire, the signal from the mixing board or the microphone, is now stored like an imprint. The reoriented magnetic domains of the particles on the emulsion of the tape. Now, making this imprint isn't very useful if we can't do something with it later. But if you'll remember that second part of electromagnetism, that the movement of a magnet can induce an electric current in a wire, Imagine this now magnetized tape is run underneath the tape head. It'll induce the same signal that produced the imprint on the tape back into the wire, which you can then send through an amplifier and loudspeakers, or drive the cutting lathe to produce a master disc or wherever else you want. And understanding this fact about physics, the relationship between electricity and magnetism demystifies a lot of the things that are important to daily life. Everything from washing machines to power plants. But it's also the main driver behind most of the technology we use in music today. Microphones, speakers, guitar pickups, tape machines. And now that you know how tape works at a fundamental level, you might be wondering why we're still using it today. Now, it might not surprise you to know that the majority of the records you've heard in your lifetime were recorded to tape. It was the best, highest quality recording medium that existed for much of the 20th century. But what might be surprising is that even after the advent of digital recording, tape is still very popular. Like any medium, it has its own characteristic impact on the final product. And tape does some really nice things to sound. It can soften transients, thicken low end, do a unique kind of compression, and bring a sense of cohesion to disparate elements in a mix. And it saturates in a kind of beautiful way. But there are also some challenges in recording to tape. It's expensive. There's a lot of maintenance involved. And there are some quirks you have to deal with. Like wow and flutter, a kind of frequency wobble. Tape can shed as the binders in the tape break down. There's print through, ghost signal from one or more windings of tape onto adjacent layers. And there's dropouts, signal losses caused by missing oxide, defect in the tape, debris on the tape or the machine. But if you wanted even more proof that we're living through a golden age of recording technology, it's possible now to capture the wonderful qualities of tape without having to deal with the complications with software. The Ampex ATR-102 is one of the most highly regarded mastering tape recorders 
of all time and was a central piece of major recording and mastering studios for decades. And Universal Audio has given us a meticulously modeled plug-in version. No shedding tape, no maintenance to do. And this will be a convenient way for us to explore the effect of tape, as well as different tape types, widths, speeds. We can even independently control wow, flutter, and tape hiss. So you'll know all about tape, as well as how to deploy and shape the sound of it in a modern digital recording environment. So here I have a raw piano take, straight into my stereo pair, into the inputs of my Apollo. And it sounds nice enough just like this, but there is something special about the sound of tape on a piano. Let's take a look at the main level controls. If you wanna increase the level into the tape, we adjust the record. Now let's set the meters to show us the input level. Now in this plugin, minus 12 dBFS corresponds to zero on the view meter. And that's kind of the sweet spot that we want to shoot for. So we're going to bring up record till we're in that ballpark. And as with real tape, higher levels at the input will give us more saturation and color. But it'll also make things louder overall. So we can compensate by bringing down reproduce. And in this way, you can get as much tape color as you like without creeping the gain up. Okay, that's pretty much the same. The next set of global controls down here. Sync models the sound of recording and playback through the record head. Using the record head for playback, totally possible. Input models the sound of live monitoring mode. The tape's not running. It's the sound of the machine electronics only. Through is like a bypass, but you'll most often use repro. This is the sound of tape recording through the record head and playback through the reproduction head. Here we can select different tape speeds in inches per second. And you can see the reels literally slow down as I select a lower tape speed. 7.5 and 3.75 IPS sound more colored and the higher tape speeds, 15 and 30 IPS using more tape per moment of music, of course, have higher fidelity. Okay, we're gonna look under the hood now. Don't freak out, I know it looks like a lot. Watch the setting screws as I change the tape speed. You see him move? As I change tape speed and other settings like tape type and width, the plugin automatically calibrates to that new setting by adjusting the record EQ, the signal before it hits the tape, and playback EQ, the signal after, as well as bias. Because tape systems are inherently nonlinear, different tape speeds, widths, and even types of tape will react differently to the same input. Auto calibrate is meant to compensate for that, but you can actually switch it off to have even more control in shading the sound. So for example, I can over bias the tape, which makes the sound a little bit more saturated and brings in a kind of compression unique to tape. Hear that peak? It's much more pronounced without the tape. So we're not actually trying to get perfect reproduction of the original signal. We're actually going for a kind of effect. We can under bias the tape. And if I bring up the level. It's kind of a magical sound. And if I bring it back to the more ideal bias setting, this gives us the maximum record sensitivity and low distortion setting we might use in, say, mastering or more subtle coloration of individual tracks. And with AutoCal still off, let's listen to the difference between the different tape speeds. Three and three quarters, a common tape speed for consumer use. Slow tape speed means longer recording time. Seven and a half was common in radio and some commercial recordings. 15 IPS has a nice low frequency bump, very popular for rock music, for example. And 30 IPS gives you the best high frequency response. 
Tape width, among other things, has an impact on the dynamic range. Double the width, you get a 3 dB improvement. Tape type refers to different varieties of tape. Different manufacturers like Ampex, Scotch, BASF. Different operating levels and, of course, different sonic characteristics. Now for one of my favorite parts of the plugin, the wow and flutter controls. Now these wouldn't have been on the original machine, which had very low wow and flutter, but in the software world, we can play it up for effect. And that sound gives me some serious feelings of nostalgia. You can also bring in some tape hiss. Bear with me for a moment. This is important. Just about it. There. You can even get pretty close to the sound of a cassette tape. Well, I still miss those anyway. All right, enough playing around. Let's get this piano sound where we want it. Jump to 15 IPS. Let's roll some of that hiss back. Let's get these levels back to normal. And listen to the sound open up, especially as I go over to the one inch. There's that beautiful sense of movement from the wow and flutter being up way too high. And now we can emphasize the high frequencies into the tape. And this is like a high shelf that brings all the air and brilliance, but never sounds crispy. By comparison, the original sounds unbelievably dull. Quick check on the other tape speeds. Ah, let's stay with the 30. And with a more conservative high shelf setting. If you don't like wow, flutter, or fun, you can turn it off here. But I think you know where I stand on this. Crosstalk is signal bleed between the left and the right channels. This is an actual thing that happens on all devices, usually very subtle. You can remove the transformer, which was a common modification on this device, to get a cleaner sound. And Universal Audio has built in a tape delay. Who doesn't love tape delays? I would do anything to be able to click and drag to change the values, but it makes you work for it. Gotta respect that. In this case, let's keep it clean anyway. One last check. Took a good sound on its own. A little bit more life and personality. All right, that's it for this time. Any questions about tape? feel free to ask me in the comments. Make sure you subscribe so you catch my future videos. And as always, thanks for watching. I'm Sahara Galt. I'll see you next time.